What if I told you that the correct way to address the ball, to hit that nice tight draw like the pros, consistent divots, consistent contact, isn't to set up square to the club like this or square to the ball with it in front of you, but it's actually to set up over here, almost 15 degrees to your right. Now, in addition to that, we're gonna work on this draw by using the correct grip. Now, most likely you've been told to use a grip that's neutral, and unless you're a super flexible, uh, freak of nature athlete, you don't be need to be using that grip. We wanna get the impact grip and not the setup grip. Once you find that, you're gonna know how to per set perfectly set up to the golf ball. And then finally, I'm gonna give you one last trick on the angle of the shaft. And there's a correct angle here at address that's gonna help us to promote those draws also. All right, so let's jump into the first piece there. Now, most of the time, we've been told to set up the golf balls in front of us. We simply take our grip, the leading edge is straight up and down. We address the golf ball and this looks like a pretty good posture. Well, the problem with this is our right hand is not beside our left hand on the grip. So if I, my right hand and left hand were beside each other, my knees would be square, my hips would be square, my shoulders would be square, my palms and my forearms would all be square to the target if I'm using this straight in front of you setup position with everything aligned to the target. Unfortunately, the right hand is farther down the shaft. And you'll notice as I move this right hand, I'm gonna exaggerate here so you can see it. As I move this right hand further down the shaft, that's gonna kick the entire right side of my body farther this way. Now I'm really exaggerating there so you can see it from this down the line perspective, but look how the right knee, right hip, right shoulder, right forearm, everything goes further and further down. So if I was to simply se separate my grip by say, having the hands right down here, well, you could see how open I would be. That's happening to a small degree as your right hand just goes down another five or six inches to be below the left hand on the grip. So if I set up square, I slide my right hand slightly down, what would be a normal golf grip, and I feel like I'm square, notice how my forearms are actually pointed to the left over here. Notice how my knees are actually slightly to the left, my hips and my right shoulder has started to kick out. That's gonna promote a steeper downswing and a more over the top motion, which you can overcome that, but you're gonna have to fight it. You're really gonna have to fight to feel like you get from the inside. Now here's a solution to that. Go ahead and take your normal grip, this standard square setup. I'm gonna put the ball in the middle of my stance. And then from here, I'm simply gonna rotate my entire body. So I'm gonna keep my elbows attached to my rib cage, the side of my body. And I'm gonna rotate my entire body. Knees, hips, shoulders, arms, club, everything about 15 degrees to the right. Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and bend down until my club would be on the ground. My hips are a little forward. You'll see how that puts my upper body a little bit back. You'll notice how pros do that all the time. You'll hear me talk about how that's one of the five real fundamentals of golf is getting that spine slightly tilted away. But as I do that, that gets me tilted in a position over here to the right. And if all I do from there is go ahead and set the club back up to the golf ball, now look how knees, hips, shoulders, forearms, everything is nice and lined up toward the target when you're looking from that down the line view. So it's that little tilt to the right that squares everything back up in the golf swing. So that's how I wanna set up if I'm gonna be nice and powerful. It also allows me to get behind the golf ball so that I can come from the inside, have that great angle of lag like we always talk about. Now, the second piece here is that does us no good if we go down to contact and the face is wide open, we hit a giant slice. So what I want you to do here is instead of taking your grip based on where you're at at address, this is nothing like you're at when you're at impact. So at impact, my weight's gonna be more left, my hips are gonna be open, and my hands are gonna be in front of the golf ball at impact. Now, when you do these motions, open the hips, put the hands in front, that typically opens the face. I gotta square that back up. So I wanna go ahead, bump a little bit forward, open up to where I'd be at impact. Then I wanna take the leading edge of the bottom edge of this club and square it back up to the target. So I don't want the face to be open like this, I wanna get it square. And then from there, I'm gonna re-grip the club to whatever feels natural. If it feels natural to you to be way over to the right, get to the right. If it feels natural to you to be more to the left, whatever feels comfortable where you'll be at impact, that's where I wanna train in my grip. Then I'm gonna keep my hands on the club where they feel comfortable, and I'm gonna go back to my address position. Again, that's my new grip. This is the one that's gonna help me to square the club at impact, which is the only part that matters. And then I just go through the same thing again. 
go to the right, bend down, put the club behind the ball. All right, now I'm in a great athletic setup. It looks like I'm about to hit the ball pretty daggone hard. All right, now the last piece here, if we're gonna promote this draw, again, these are all draw promoting. Tilting it to the right, got that path to the inside, that's draw promoting. That's what this motion did. If we're fading it, then this is exactly what we should do, be doing. Getting an impact, getting the face open, that's gonna promote a fade. We reorganized our grip to square the face and get a nice tight straight shot, dead straight to a nice little draw. And then finally, we're gonna look at the shaft angle this way or this way. Now when I set up, I see a lot of players tend to get the club really high like this. So their setup looks something like this. Well, that gets the toe of the club more down to the ground and the shaft angle a little bit more vertical. I can actually grab a little club face alignment tool here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here, this is on the club face. As I start to get the shaft more vertical, even if I keep the leading edge in the same spot, as I get the shaft more vertical, look how the face is now pointing out to the right. If I get the shaft lower, the face is pointing more to the left. So a lot of people set up with that face more vertical this direction without even knowing it and then again, fighting to get that draw. It's not that you can't draw it from there, it's that you have to work to be able to get that ball to draw. So let's go through the progression again. I'm gonna go to impact, square up the face, hands in front, and I'm gonna take whatever grip feels really comfortable for the only part that matters, which is hitting the ball solid at impact. I'm gonna redo my normal setup. Set in front of me, tilt over to the right, 15 degrees, everything moves over there. As I bend down, and put the club back to the ball, you'll notice how now forearms, knees, everything is lined up. And then finally, I'm gonna set the shaft a little bit lower to allow me to hit that nice little draw. Now, if I've done this correctly, I'm gonna hit a little draw here. If I hit a fade here, it's not gonna look very good. I'm gonna look like I don't know what I'm talking about. So let's see if I can uh, live up to the pressure here a little bit. There we go, that was nice and solid. And that's exactly what I was hoping to see there if you look at the black tracer, or the, the gray tracer on the, the ground, you can see that ball drew just about three or four yards, which is perfect. One thing I wanna be clear on here, a draw doesn't mean it's swinging 20 yards. A draw can be a few feet, and if you look at the PJ Tour players, when you go to a tour event, if you're lucky enough to do so, you'll notice that that ball is just barely turning over. That's the kind of ball flight that I want you to have. Now, there's a couple of things here that make this a lot easier if you're doing them correctly. One of them is how you start the downswing. And a lot of players rush the start of their downswing and you're just way behind the eight ball. You see the, the entire downswing is only a quarter of a second. So from the top of my swing to impact, a quarter of a second. What are the odds of me getting through impact consistently? If I'm rushing my downswing, this club starts to steepen up and now I've got a 16th of a second to get from here to impact, way too many manipulations. If you wanna hit, the ball consistently. If you want to step up to a golf ball and feel like it's easy to hit it straight, you've got to get this club to shallow out and you've got to smooth out that transition. When you smooth out the transition, it gives you time to feel like your swing is nice and effortless. And if you do it the right way, you're actually going to get more distance than if you felt rushed. Now I'm going to play a preview of a video that's going to show you exactly why you're rushing your downswing and how to get rid of it once and for all. All you need to do is go ahead and click one of the cards that pops up on your screen over here. If you don't see one of those cards, don't worry, go down to the link below in the description and you'll get instant access there too. So let's smooth out that transition. Let's add it to what we talked about in this perfect setup. And I want you to play your best golf. Let's go and get started. Now the bottom line is that if you pull this club down to ring that bell or pull the hands more from the inside, what's gonna happen is you start to rush your downswing from that pulling and that can throw off your sequence. And we all know that once your sequence gets off, that is gonna be the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being outdriven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in this steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on this shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, 
everything starts to fit in your swing. Now your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't wanna be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move. And that's gonna allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I wanna be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do. 